And for the very first talk, we'll do a bit, something a bit unusual. We'll have a volunteer, uh, Fan Zhang, who's going to be volunteering to present the paper, even though he's not an author. So um, hello, everyone. Since the authors cannot present in person, I will present this paper on behalf of them. Um, after the presentation, the authors will answer questions virtually in the Q&A. Um, so this work proposes a software-only approach to protect page table against row hammer attacks. It is a collaborative work across six organizations from both academia and industry. So in the first place, I will talk about the background of Rohammer and then the strong motivation for this work. After that, I will introduce this work, its security and performance evaluation, and reach a conclusion at last. So first is the background. So what is Rohammer? Literally speaking, uh, Rohammer is to frequently access specific DRAM cells in DRAM rows as the density of cells in DRAM chips increases significantly, it, be it, it becomes highly likely for these cells to electrically um, interact with each other. As such, frequently accessing a DRAM row allows an attacker to influence the electrical charge of its neighboring row, the root cause of row hammer. Before we give more details about it, we first introduce what a DRAM bank is. That's where every DRAM row uh, resides. So for a DRAM bank's layout, um, as we can see from the picture, a bank has rows of cells and a rows buffer um, serving an incoming memory access. The cell has a capacitor and an access transistor. The capacitor is in a state of either charged or discharged to, re uh, to represent bit zero or bit one. The access transistor works like a switch, which allows or disallows the cell's bit information to be read out to the row buffer. So row buffer is responsible for serving a specific memory axis. However, uh, the capacitor of every cell loses charge over time, and therefore cells must be periodically refreshed. The refresh rate is typically 64 milliseconds in DDR3 and DDR4. In 2014, uh, Kim and his team observed that frequently opening rows N plus one and N minus one will cause some cells in row N leak charge at a much faster rate so that such cells cannot recover their charge even when a DRAM refresh comes. This observation implies that some bits in the victim row cells um, have been flipped permanently from bit one to bit zero or from bit zero to bit one. So now the motivation of this work. Of the many sensitive objects that have been corrupted by existing row hammer attacks, Page table corruption is the most detrimental to system security and hard to mitigate. If level one page tables are placed onto victim rows and corrupted by row hammer, the whole system security can be compromised. So mainstream row hammer attacks are targeting level one page table corruption. To defend against level one page table based row hammer attacks, we focus this on software only approaches as they are compatible with existing so uh, hardware allowing better deployability when compared with hardware defenses. However, existing software-only defenses have two major limitations. First, they're not practical enough as they require modifying existing kernel memory allocator to make the allocator be aware of the mapping between uh, physical address and DRAM location. Second, they're not effective enough against level one page table oriented Roham attacks. For example, the PT hammer shown in Micro 2020 can defeat most software-only defenses. Before PT hammer was published, Roham attacks are explicit. That means they require access permissions to part of rows adjacent to level one page table rows so that these rows can be hammered to induce bit flips in the level one page table rows in the middle. For PT hammer, the attacker does not require the explicit access permission Instead, the attacker abuses the page table walk to trick the processor to implicitly hammer level one page tables on the two sides and induce bit flips to level one page tables in the middle. So an overview of the project. Uh, for our work, we aim to protect page tables from row hammer attacks while addressing the two limitations of existing works. So we have three design principles. First, we need to be effective enough in protecting page tables from explicit and implicit attacks. Second, we need to be compatible with OS kernels. We do not modify 
kernel source code or break kernel code integrity through binary instrumentation. Last, our approach should incur small performance overhead to commodity system. Our approach is inspi inspired by a widely deployed hardware defense, that is DRAM chip-based target row refresh, also called chip TRR. From a high level, chip TRR counts rows activations and refreshes adjacent rows to suppress bit flips if the activation counts reach a predefined limit. However, chip TRR can only track a limited number of rows due to limited hardware space. With this observation, stretch pass in IEEE SNP 2020 broke chip TRR's security guarantee by using many-sided hammer. To protect page table integrity while addressing the security limitations, we propose soft TRR, a software-only approach that leverages MMU and OS kernel features. So we are aware of that MMU and OS kernel work together to enforce memory access mediation. In particular, page tables dictate access commissions to each physical page, and an authorized access means that a user access to a virtual page violates the dictated access permissions. As this figure shows, the unauthorized access raises a page fault and will be captured by the MMU. As a response, the MMU will switch the process context to the kernel. The page fault handler will be invoked to handle the fault based on a hardware-generated error code. And then the handler will ask MMU to update TLB and page tables accordingly. Essentially, soft TRR leverages page tables and page fault handler to frequently trace memory accesses to any rows adjacent to rows hosting page tables. Here's an overview of our approach. Soft TRR works as a loadable module inside the kernel, and it has three main components. The first is the page table collector. So the page table collector actively collects all page tables and maintains their page and DRAM information. It also collects and maintains adjacent pages. Because all existing page table oriented row hammer attacks aim at corrupting level one page tables. In our implementation, we focus on protecting level one page tables or L1PTs that are targeted by existing explicit and implicit row hammer attacks. For existing L1PT pages, the page table collector enumerates the list of task structure in a kernel to collect L1PT pages. There are DRAM adjacent pages and there are DRAM row locations as well. For L1PT pages, that are dynamically allocated or freed after the enumeration, the collector hooks L1PT alloc and free functions in the kernel. So what is a DRAM adjacent page? It refers to a page that resides in a row adjacent to a row hosting L1PT pages. Based on the Kim's paper from ISCA 2020, the largest row distance between a Vitcom row and the hammer row is up to six row. So in our implementation, a DRAM adjacent page row can be up to six row away from a level one PT page row. To maintain the collected page and DRAM row location information, we, re we reuse the kernel's red black tree structure and have three red black trees. The second component is adjacent page tracer. In this component, adjacent page tracer traces access to the maintained adjacent pages. If an access is traced, the adjacent page tracer maintains and updates a counter called charge leak counter for its relevant page table page row. When the counter reaches a predefined limit, the third component of row refresher will be triggered, which is similar to chip TRR. For its tracing purpose, the adjacent page tracer sets up tracing to collected adjacent pages in each time point from T0 to T1 to Tn, and the interval between two adjacent time points is called timer interval. When the tracer captures the first memory access in green color and ignores subsequent memory access in each time period of timer interval and updates the charge leak counter. Whenever the counter reaches a predefined limit called count limit, the row refresher is triggered to refresh. For the implementation, the adjacent page tracer needs to implement a periodic tracing. 
and determine a timer interval as short as possible and a count limit as low as possible so that a row hammer attacker cannot induce bit flips in a period of threshold. To set up periodic tracing, we can configure present bit or reserved bit in a leaf page table entries. With this configuration, we capture every type of memory access, such as read, write, or instruction fetch. In this figure, we can see that if a virtual page has a corresponding leaf page table entry and the PTE has present bit set to zero or reserve bit set to one, an access to the virtual page will erase the page fault. The MMU will switch the process context to the kernel and forward the page fault error code to the page fault handler. When the present bit is set to zero on the leaf PTE, the access triggers a page fault with P bit in the error code set to zero. When the reserved bit is set to 1 in the leaf PTE, the access triggers a page fault with RSVD bit in the error code set to 1. In our implementation, we choose reserved bit. We observe that the kernel performs active checks of the present bit, and we cannot avoid such checks without modifying the kernel code. For the reserved bit, it is unused even in recent Linux kernels, and therefore there is no check against the reserved bit. To determine timer interval and count limit, we need to know the value of threshold. In this figure, we can see that the threshold must satisfy such an equation. That is, timer interval multiplies count limit minus one, and so an attacker's hammering time before our refresh is a period of, period of threshold. The adjacent page tracer needs to make sure that no bit flip will be caused during the period of threshold. Based on the ISCA paper of 2020, a safe threshold is one millisecond. That means no bit flip can occur within one millisecond when a DRAM chip is being frequently hammered. Given that both timer intervals and count limit are unsigned integers, we set timer interval to one millisecond and count limit to two to keep the security guarantee. The last component is bro refresher. When the counters reach the predefined limit, the row refresher is triggered to refresh desired row hosting page table pages. By doing so, rows hosting page tables in orange colors are immune to row hammer induced bit flips, while non page table rows in green colors are still vulnerable to bit flips. It is straightforward to refresh a specified row. We use a memory read to a kernel virtual address to refresh a specified row as memory read can charge a row and suppress any possible bit flips. Before we do the read access, we also need to flush CPU caches of the kernel virtual address. To obtain the cor correct kernel virtual address, the row refresher leverages direct physical map. This mapping is built by Linux kernel to map available physical memory into kernel space. So we can find the correct kernel virtual address mapped to a specified row by using two mappings. One is the direct physical map, and the other is between a physical address and a DRAM row location. Okay, here are our evaluation results. We deploy soft TRR into one system against one representative kernel privilege escalation attack. For memory spray, it hammers user memory that is adjacent to L1PT pages. For catmill, it hammers device driver buffer adjacent to L1PT pages. PT Hammer implicitly hammers L1PT pages that are adjacent to other L1PT pages. Both memory spray and catmill are explicit row hammer attacks with two different types of memory accessible to normal users. PT Hammer is the only published implicit row hammer attack. In our experiments, each attack targets n L1PT pages and n is 50. Without soft TRR, each attack can succeed. With soft TRR, each attack fails to induce bit flips in the 50 L1PT pages, indicating that those attacks have been mitigated. For the performance evaluation, we consider three representative uh, benchmarks. Spec speed 2017 integer focuses on CPU. Memcached focuses on memory. Phronix test suite benchmarks the system as a whole. We launch each of the benchmarks to evaluate soft TRS performance overhead in two scenarios. 
One is delta within one, where an adjacent row is only one row from a row hosting L1PT pages. And this is a common assumption from previous works. So these works cannot defend against attacks where the row distance can be more than one row. In our design, an, an, an adjacent row can be multiple rows away from the page table row. Based on the aforementioned work in ISCA 2020, the largest row distance can be up to six rows. So in our implementation, we consider delta within six, where a row hosting L1PT pages has an adjacent row that can be six rows away. As this table shows, soft TRR incurs less than 1% overhead on average to each of the three benchmarks in both scenarios. We also use the real-world use case to measure runtime memory consumptions of soft TRR. It is a LAMP production environment with soft TRR deployed, and we run a common tool, Nikto, for 60 minutes to stress test the LAMP with soft TRR from another machine. The results are shown in this figure. The memory costs in both delta within one and delta within six increase gradually and they reach a relatively stable level in the last 15 minutes. Both delta within one and delta within six have a similar and low memory cost that is less than 600 kilobytes. To evaluate the robustness of a test system with soft TRR enabled, we selected 20 system calls of different types and performed stress tests for each selected system call on both a vanilla system and a soft TRR enabled system. From this table, we can see that there is no deviation for the soft TRR enabled system compared to the vanilla system. Last, we have three key takeaways. Compared to existing works, soft TRR is a more effective and practical software only mitigation. For its implementation, soft TRR works as a loadable kernel module to defend against row hammer attacks on L1PT pages. It leverages MMU and OS kernel features to collect L1PT pages, track memory accesses, and refresh target L1PT pages. For its evaluation, soft TRR is evaluated to be effective against three representative row hammer attacks and incur small overhead and memory footprints. With that, I'll conclude my talk and the authors will be online for uh, Q&A.